This conference will now be recorded. So that table, whenever you come to it, you are coming together in the body of Christ. Remember, you alone are not the body of Christ. You are only a member of the body. Who knows? You could be a thumb in the body of Christ. You could be the small finger in the body of Christ. You could be eye. You could be nose. You could be ear. You could be tongue. You could be foot, ankle, leg. All these places in a human body supplies a need, serves a purpose without which the body will not be complete. So you fit into the body of Christ. Without you, the body is not complete. The accentuation of this unity is at the table, the communion table. That was why Jesus Christ there declared to me, this is a new covenant in my blood. When they were all together, whenever you do this thing, do it in remembrance of me. He didn't tell one person, go and do it in remembrance of me. He told the body, the church, the believers, that's the only place we can come together to do it in unity and in oneness. And as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. And he called us to caution and said, do it properly. It is so important that you don't do it carelessly, but you do it very, very seriously because there is where you are tied together by the Holy Spirit into that covenant family of God. I want us to have this understanding whenever we come to things like this. We don't just don't do it, but we know why we are doing it so that we can receive the full blessings of it. Because everything of the Lord is mystery. And if you don't have a knowledge of mystery, it causes fear or abuse. That is why the, 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 the decoding of the mystery is very important. That was why Jesus Christ would take his disciples, the true believers, and take them aside after speaking in parables for the whole general public. He would take true believers aside and decode the parable to them so that they will not be either in fear or be abusive of what they have heard. Because when you misuse something, when you don't use something for its purpose, you are abusing that thing. And every abuse has a consequence and has a judgment. That is why the Bible says, even those who come to the table of Christ, if they abuse it, some people die, some people get sick, some people are condemned. So the things we do are important. That is why we don't just speak anyhow, that's why we don't concentrate on fanciness, on entertainment, and all those things. But we tell the truth, we speak the truth according to the scriptures, as the Lord gives us understanding. And I thank God for you because I see what is happening in your life. I listen to your prayers and I see changes in your prayers. I see some changes also in the interpretation and understanding of the scriptures. And I see how some of us are beginning to draw back from the general error that is there. Because it's popular and it's general, doesn't make it correct. And I see some of us very, very reticent and reluctant to flow in that area. For the Lord himself wonders, broad is the way that leads to the kingdom of hell. Broad, generality and popularity does not make anything right. The truth is in the Lord and in him alone. The Bible says evil communications corrupt good manners. When you listen to error, it will corrupt your manner. That said, today, 
we want to, with the little time that we have left, I can assure you, we are not going to take your time more than is necessary. Today, the, the, the topic or title is simply by this, by this, B Y then this T H I S by this. Just simple as that. Our Bible is reading is taken from Philippians chapter two one to fifteen. Philippians chapter two one to fifteen. But before we do that, let us sing. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. One more time. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. Praise the Lord. Please read the scripture. Our Bible reading, Philippians chapter 2, 1 to 15. Philippians chapter 2, 1 to 15. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Holy Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who walks in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless, children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I just received a message from Sister Mercy. 
He says she just received. You say prayer request update. Hi, Pastor. Re received some encouraging news just now from Francis sister Rose. Spoke to doctor. Her numbers are improving today, notwithstanding that she's on ventilator. Praise and thanks to God and to thank you all for your prayers. We'll continue to keep you updated. Mercy. You see, even when we're in service right now, we are receiving updates of improvement and answer to the prayers that you're praying. You see, God wants to encourage us as well. I normally don't, when service begins, I don't touch my phones or do any of those things. But somehow, I had this prompt immediately, pick up your phone. And I picked up the phone, and what I saw on the message was prayer update, mercy. I said, what is this? Then this is it. Please, God is telling you all something. It's encouraging you. It's not my word. I'm not trying to make you feel good. You can see this happening. I want you to pray again and say, Lord, continue the good work you're doing in these people's lives. Beyond this person, every other person. Please. God is answering your prayer. That's what is showing us right now. The compassion of God, the love of God, and the fact that you have bought into it and you have the same spirit. Mention it to God right now. Just a mention that whatever God is doing, the details of it, that he may continue to do it. We cover that situation in the blood of Jesus Christ. The devil will not use this information for his benefits. Any attempt of the devil to interfere will glorify God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I hope with all this you still remember what you just read in the Bible reading. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our memory verse is taken from John chapter 13, 34 and 35. 34 and 35. John chapter 13. I love to see Christian living be manifested, not just talk, 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 but manifestation of reality of our Christianity and the faithfulness of God. That is what we're going through. Okay, John chapter 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love one another amen amen as i told you the title to this short message this communion message is by this that's why the the memory verse is taken from here a new commandment i have given i give to you that ye love one another as i have loved you that ye also love one another by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you love one and one to another. The Lord has given you one pointer that identifies you as part of the body of Christ, as a follower of Christ, as a disciple of Christ, that you love every other person who is a disciple. Love one another. The Bible talks about love generally for God, for your neighbors, from people, for people. But well, this particular love is for Christians, the followers of Christ. If you are in the church and you are not loving a Christian, something is terribly wrong. There is a serious disconnect in that situation. Amen? We shall see as we go on. The Lord has called his church, that is the saints, to love one another. He says in John 15, 12, this is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. And in John 15, 17, these things I command you, that you love one another. You see, there are so many places where 
the Lord was talking to the brethren, the body, the followers, love one another, love one another, love one another, because it's very important. The body of Christ is one. We are all members. I am sure that at one time or the other, while eating, something sumptuous, delightful, tasty, your teeth beat your tongue. How did it feel? When your teeth mistakenly beat your tongue, even so much so that you cut your, you cut your tongue and blood came out. It's very disturbing. It's very painful. You just don't know. The things you're eating that you're enjoying suddenly turn something else. Even when you try to manage and eat it because of the, 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 the sweetness and the enjoyment, you can no longer enjoy the same. When a member of the body does wrong, to other members or another part of the body. That is how it feels. Discomforting. And the Lord said, don't do that. Instead, love, love one another, cooperate with one another, be peaceful with one another, be gracious to one another. He said, by this, the whole world will know that you are my disciple, you are my follower. By this action of loving one another, so let us register in our spirit today. Your identification as the disciple of Jesus Christ is by loving him and loving one another. Because he says, if you, if you love me, obey my commandments. When you obey Jesus Christ, it shows you, are, you love him. And when you love one another, Christians loving each other, not lustfully, but pure love, the one that the Bible describes as with, without dissimulation, without uh, a, a pretense. It shows that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Love one another. So this is, uh, this, these things I command you that you love one another. He wants, Jesus wants his, his, uh, this love to be pure and of the Holy Spirit. That is why it is written in Romans chapter 12, 9 and 10. Let love be without dissimulation or pretense. Romans 12, 9 and 10. Let love be without dissimulation. Dissimulation means uh, uh, without deceit, without pre uh, 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 pretense. You say, abhor that which is evil, Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. That is the command of our Lord Jesus Christ to his body. You measure your behavior towards other Christians who are truly Christians with this passage. I know there are so many people in the church who are, who are really not Christians. If you are a true Christian, whenever you meet them, your spirit will not yield to them. When you are communicating, there will be a dissonance, a dissonance. Something is not working. You're working too hard to be heard. You're working too hard to like the person. You're working too hard to relate properly. You know, there is a spiritual disconnect. Tone down. Let the love of Christ manifest in you. Just as it will manifest in the general populace. Amen. You still have a duty to love everyone, whether they are Christians or not, because you are the embodiment of God's love on earth. Your relationship with other Christians should be that, as Romans 13.8 puts it, Romans 13.8 say, Oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. The death 
you owe people in the, in the world today is just to love them. Even though most of the people in the world are unlovable by their attitude, by their spirit, by their hatred, by their resentment of whatever is good, they are difficult to love. They are greed, their wickedness, their deception. You see them and those things wrinkle your spirit. It's so difficult to love them, but because of who is in you, you are asked to love them. It's your responsibility, your duty to love them. More so, the children of God. You cannot afford not to love the children of God because it's the same spirit that is in you, it's in them. If you cannot love children of God, then something is wrong with you. Maybe the spirit you have is really not the Holy Spirit. I always say that. Be sure that the spirit that is in you is the Holy Spirit. You cannot continue to live in unforgiveness and resentment and hatred and jealousy and still say you're a Christian. It's impossible. It's impossible. Because the spirit that is in you is not those things. It does not manifest those things. It is a covering spirit. It's a compassionate spirit with the bowels of mercy to bring to you the love of Christ and deposit that spirit in you. God, the Bible said in Romans 5, 5 that God shed his love abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit comes into your, into your life, he comes with the love of God. That by the love of God that is in you, you can love everything God loves. We've been playing Christianity. We will not taking, we have not been taking seriously the things that really matters. Christianity just not to say, in Jesus' name, I claim this, I have that, or give me this, and give me that, I do, I am this, I am that. If you are, measure it with the picture that is in the Bible and see if you measure up to it. That's why the Bible says we are, it's like we are looking into a mirror. And whatever we see in that mirror, the mirror reflects in us. And we grow from glory to glory, from grace to grace, into the likeness of what we are looking in the mirror. Whatever you see in the mirror of the Spirit of God is what you become. And that mirror is easily revealed to you through the Word of God. And you are being told that love is there. Measure yourself and see if you are reflecting it. Is that who you are? Is that what your faith is all about? The love of Christ. Nobody can separate you from it. The moment you have received that love, the moment that love is in you, you cannot be separated from it because whenever the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he never departs. Hear that again. Some people will say, oh, don't do this or you will lose the Holy Spirit. It's not possible. Hear me again. When the Holy Spirit comes into your life, he never leaves. You cannot lose the Holy Spirit. You cannot. Our Lord Jesus Christ said in John, is it 14 or 16 now? He says, I will send you the promise of the Father and he will be with you. He will teach you things. He will bring the things that are taught you to your remembrance. He will show you things that we, that, we, that, we, that we yet to be, that is yet to be. And he will be with, he will take the things that belong to me and show them to you. And then he said, he will be with you forever until the end. The Bible says that the gift and the call of God is without repentance. If he gives you the Holy Spirit, he does not repent and withdraw it. You can go on and on in the Bible and see the evidence that when the Holy Spirit comes, he remains. The Bible says that whatever God do it, it is forever or it's permanent. 
so that men will know that he is God who did it. So if, the, if God gives you the Holy Spirit, is that the state? The God who gives you the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, knows the end from the beginning. Ever before he commits his spirit into your life, he knows what your end is going to be. Hallelujah. We can go on and on and rejoice that today, if you have the Holy Spirit, rejoice because you're making it to heaven. That is why the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, chapter, chapter 4 says to you, examine the spirit that is in you to make sure that it's of the Lord. That means there are spirits out there who pretend and mimic the Holy Spirit, but are really not the Holy Spirit. But you can tell. You can tell the difference. When you begin to behave in ways contrary to what the Bible is saying to us in this scripture that we are reading, you will know that that spirit that is in you is not of God. That is why the Bible says, examine it. When your behavior is contrary to the scriptures, to the standard, to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, then you know that that spirit is not of God. You better begin to pray. Because the Bible says that those that love God, God will hear them when they pray. Maybe there's something wrong somewhere. Maybe there's a blockage. There's a resistance to God's salvation in your life. You love God, but you have been resisted. When you pray, God will answer you and deliver you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Sorry, I, 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 I. Yes. No, oh, no man anything but love. Nothing. That what Ephesians. He said, he said, when you owe no man anything but love, in Romans 13, 8. He said, how do you do this? With all loneliness, lowliness, humility, meekness, and long suffering, forbearing one another in love. It might not be easy when you are in the flesh, but by the spirit, when you bring all things to the obedience of Christ, it is very easy. It becomes your lifestyle. But when you are still in the flesh, there is still a little bit of carnality there and there, competition there and there, envy there and there, it's difficult. For you to do this loving properly as a child of God towards other children of God, the Bible says you should be lowly. In other words, lower yourself. Don't puff up yourself. That way, you can relate to all levels of the brethren in the natural. When I mean in the natural, I mean in the world today. There are some rich ones. There are some very poor ones. There are some sick ones. There are some healthy ones. But they are all children of God. Why they are that way, we don't know. And for you to relate to them without discrimination, the Bible says you should do it lowliness. You should do it with meekness. You should do this love with long suffering, not on bearing people, yeah, for bearing one another in love. Don't be judgmental. The more you grow in love, the less you are judgmental. That does not mean when you see somebody, Wallowing in sin, you tolerate it and accept the person. Just as some preachers preach, they say, the grace of God has covered your sin. That is not scriptural. The sin that was covered was the sin you committed before you embraced the grace of God in salvation. After that, if you really receive salvation, the Spirit of God is in you, who administers the grace of God. And that spirit of God is the seed of God. The Bible says that you cannot sin because the seed of God is in you. I say that all the time to debunk that idea that because you say you are a Christian, you can live in sin 
and God has forgiven you and you can continue. No, that's not scripture. That's a difference between those who are in the world and those who are with God. Sin and love is important. You are no longer in sin, you are forgiven, you are cleansed. You have a new spirit that does not desire sin. And you love God, you love man, and most especially your brethren. Hallelujah. This love for the brethren cannot be done in the flesh, but by or through the Holy Spirit, because it is God that pours his love into your heart by the Holy Spirit. Romans 5.5. 5. And hope does not disappoint. That's what the Romans 5, 5 says. Because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. That's how we get this love. Recognize it and obey the Holy Spirit and be led by the Spirit. For the Bible says that those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. And the sons of God do love. For God is in them, and they love the love of God by the love of God. Amen? Hallelujah. If you are lacking this love, this pure, undiluted, unpretentious love for your fellow believers, the communion table, the place of unity in Christ, is the place to come and ask the Lord for the grace. I will say that again. This is very poignant, very important for today's meeting. And this is the very purpose for which this word is being preached today. If you are lacking this pure, undiluted, unpretentious love for your fellow believers, the communion table, as we are here now, the place of unity in Christ and with Christ and with one another is the place to come and ask the Lord for the grace for this love. As we are ending this message, we should end up asking God for the grace, for the love for the brethren. That does not, meet, that does not mean that any, everybody will meet your standard or that everybody will be like you. There are differences. The toe cannot pretend to be the thumb. The eye cannot pretend to be the ear. They have different functions, but with patience, forbearing, long suffering, you will begin to understand and appreciate the giftings that everybody in the body of Christ in a church like ours brings to the table. Because you by yourself are not everything. You lack certain things. Somebody else will supply them. If you notice in this church, we encourage people to do something, especially the covenant servant leaders. We want you to come out of yourself because there is something in you. You are a gold mine. You are a treasure trove. As a person, listen to my word carefully. You are a gold mine. You are a treasure trove. There's so much in you that God has put in you for his body where he put you and deposited you. That is why in this church, we don't hog the pulpit. Only the pastor will do this and do that. But we encourage people to do what they have to do in the offices they have been called. They must not compete with the pastor. Because it's like we are standing on a hill and the pastor is standing at the peak of the hill so he can see further than you who are not at that level. Not because he's more spiritual, but because his position demands it. So you humble yourself and bring all things to the obedience of Christ. You pray for the pastor, just as uh, uh, Pastor uh, Flora says, she will pray for me today. So that he will see clearly and then hear clearly, and guide the rest of us so that in our offices we will fit in where God has called us, it is important. If you are in the wrong church, you will not fulfill your destiny, believe me. That is why it is important that you pray that God will locate you and plant you 
in his prepared places for you and surround you with your team of agreement. In Christianity, you don't just strike out and do whatever you please and have freedom. The Bible says that we have received liberty in Christianity. What we must not live, uh, must not use this liberty to the occasion of the flesh. You are free to do as you please. But be careful what you please. Always remember that the master himself says, not my will, but your will be done. It is very important that we come to Christ, befriend the Holy Spirit, submit to him, so that he will guide us. And this season we are in with this con uh, uh, with, uh, 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 Corona, whatever, pandemic and everything, it is vitally important that you are led by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So come to the communion table and ask God for this grace to love the brethren because it's so important. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke about it so, so many times. I'm not talking about loving the world and people. I'm not talking about loving God right now. I'm not talking about loving all your neighbors. Those are important. The first love is to God. The second love is to his church. The third love, your family. The fourth love, your neighbor. In that order. I know when I put the church before the family, some of us say, mm. Mm. How can I love uh, the church more than my son, my daughter, my husband, my wife? But look into the scripture that the true family is actually the spiritual family before the physical family. The physical family is very important because it's a responsibility. The love for the physical family is a responsibility. The love for the church is a relationship. Praise the Lord. First Thessalonians 3, 12 says, and the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. You see, in this scripture, 1 Thessalonians 3.12, the Lord delineated could not first. He said, the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another, that towards Christians. Amen? He said, and toward all men. So the love the church first before all men. In 1 Thessalonians 4 9, it is written, But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. That's how important it is. The pastor is not supposed to teach you, oh, love your brother, love your sister. No, 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 no. The Spirit of God in you is the one that teaches you. Amen. For ye yourself are taught of God to love one another. That is 1 Thessalonians 4 9. Brethren, the injunction in 1 Peter 3 8 is finally, all of you be harmonious. In other words, be in unity, be in agreement, sympathetic, affectionate, compassionate, and humble. That is the only way you can love the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ is not divided. If you have the Holy Spirit, you are in the body of Christ. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not. And you cannot be in the body of Christ even though you are in church. If you don't have the Holy Spirit. Being in church is not the same as being together with Christians or in agreement with Christians. They are different. 
You can be in church and not be in agreement. That is why whenever you see gossip emanate from, from the church, whenever you see all kinds of trouble coming, coming closely, the people making this trouble, and, uh, uh, manifesting this gossip, initiating them, they are in church, but they are not with church because they don't have the Holy Spirit. They are children of men who have joined themselves with sons of God. And they bring this cord, this unity, gossip, slander, division. If you are careless as a Christian, you listen to them. Because everything they do, they do in the flesh and the emotional level. But if you remain in the spirit of God, you will see through them. Their interests are always parochial, personal, and petty. The major in petty things, instead of in the major things, the major in minor things that does not advance the body of Christ and the gospel. Be careful. Watch over your soul. So he said, in all these things, finally, brethren, you be harmonious or in agreement, sympathetic, affectionate, compassionate, and humble. First Peter 3 8. It is important that we know, as it is written in First John 4 20 to 21, it says, We're talking about love for one another in the church now, one another in the body of Christ. If anyone says, I love God, and yet hates his fellow Christian, he is a liar. Because the one who does not love his fellow Christian, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And the commandment we have from him is this, that the one who loves God should love his fellow Christians too. I think that sums it up. First John 4, 20 to 21. I will read it as we conclude again. If anyone says, I love God, and yet hates his fellow Christian, he is a liar, because the one who does not love his fellow Christian, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And the commandment we have from him, from the Lord, is this that the one who loves God should love his fellow Christians too. Praise the Lord. Just as we say, if you have difficulties, nobody is perfect. If you have dis difficulties manifesting and expressing this love of the brethren, either because you keep remembering a hurt that the church has done you, or Certain people in the church who have done very hateful things and disappointed your trust, are you having difficulties really loving the church? I will tell you again, people who misbehave in church may not be the believers. They may be children of men, mixed multitude. And because of your lack of concentration and discernment, you mistake them to be the true believers and you trusted them and they disappointed you and planted a seed in your heart that is keeping you from loving the brethren, just as the Lord Jesus Christ has commanded. If you find yourself in that situation, that your love for the brethren is limited, this communion table is the perfect place and perfect time for you to ask God for that grace, to cleanse your heart, to heal your wound. For we have come in unity, in one accord, to partake of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ as we shall become one with him and one with one another, with love that is without dissimulation, pure and of God, by the Spirit of God.
call upon him right now. Bow down your head and call upon the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Pray, even when you think you have it all put together, ask for more grace. For the Bible says, as we have read, that God will make you abound in love, increase and abound in love. That first Thessalonians 3, 12. And the Lord make you to increase and abound. In other words, if you're already loving, you can increase, you can abound, you can grow. More love for the body of Christ. Because that way, you become a transmitter, a manifester of the intent and the heart of God towards his church and the world around you. Now you pray. And as you're praying, I think this is the time to bring out your cup, your wine, and the bread. Please, bring them in preparation as we conclude this meeting. Hallelujah. Pour out your wine if you haven't poured it out yet. Bring out your bread. Hallelujah. As you're praying, this is the time to do it in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. To accompany this prayer, bring out your bread, break it according to scripture. Lift it up, your bread in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Begin to break it and eat it with praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Pray that the love of God shall be shed abroad in your heart. Pray for that grace to love the, but the people of God. And I want you to know that the body of God, the body of Christ, the people of God have no race. Yeah, this is the race of the sons of God, not black, not white, not yellow, not anything. The Holy Spirit does not have colors. Break love across the races, because among all races, the people of God, the sons of God, with thanksgiving. To break that bread and it is not to strengthen you in the love of God. But you'll be filled and be overflowing with the love of God and the grace thereof. Right, there's no love, there is fear. Perfect love casts out fear. So as you take this right now, I pray that you have courage and boldness in the things of, your, of the kingdom, that you will not be under oppression of fear. Fear torments and brings hurt. Fear disables. Fear is not of God. Hallelujah. If you have done that, as we continue to pray, bring up your cup. You lift up your cup that you have prepared. That this is the new covenant in my blood, the Lord says. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. This brings you to oneness. For the, the life of a man is in his blood. The life of Christ is in his blood. So as we take it, we become one with him and one with one another. Let's partake of this. And let the love of God fill us to the overflowing. 
in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's bring together. Thank you, Father. Just bless the Lord and thank him for the grace to love. Even as he has loved us, that so shall we love the brethren and our neighbors. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take over.